All right. Uh, welcome back to our special coverage. We continue to cover the RBI policy and some of the important comments coming in from the RBI governor on the Paytm issue. And to discuss all of that, we have an esteemed panel of guests standing by. We have TV Mohandas Pai, the chairman of RN Capital, who's joining in now. We'll also have market expert Prakash Divan with us. On the policy side, we also have Soumya Kanti Ghosh from State Bank of India, Pranjal Bhandari of HSBC, Ashish Vedya of DBS Bank India, and Neeraj Gambhir of Axis Bank. Uh, gentlemen, Pranjal, all of you, thank you for joining in. Uh, let me first start with the issue of Paytm. And Mr. Mohandas Pai, you heard the governor uh, you know, talk about the fact that these actions have been taken on Paytm Payment Bank on account of the severe regulatory lapses. But that is not to say that the RBI is against innovation, against the fintech ecosystem. Your first thoughts on what you made of the matter and the comments coming in from the governor? No, no, I agree with the governor's comment because I heard him very clearly. He said mm. our policy is to give regulated entities adequate time to comply. And the RBI has given Paytm 22 months from whatever we know. And over 22 months, there have been multiple audits, multiple visits, multiple reports, including by third-party audits. And in case the Paytm is not able to comply despite all this and despite repeated warning, they should face regulatory action. So RBI has been fair. RBI has given them adequate time. 22 months is a long time. Don't forget, they asked Razorpay to stop onboarding new customers. They asked HDFC Bank to stop onboarding new customers. So RBI has been extremely consistent, and they've given adequate time to Paytm. And what I am shocked about is, what are the independent directors of a listed company like Paytm doing? Twiddling their thumbs? They should have been very careful. They should have formed a committee of independent directors, taken it independently, spoken to the regulators, and made sure the company complies. They have let down their shareholders. They have not complied because whenever there is a regulatory action by a regulator in any country, when there are very large compliance issues which could impact the survival of the company, the independent director should step up because there's a management failure. Very clearly, there's a management failure in Paytm uh, Bank today, Paytm bank, Payment Bank today. And mm. uh, sadly, the investors are paying the price for a management failure. And I think what the RBI has done is perfectly right. It's not against innovation. It is not against the new things. It is not against fintech. Because as you grow bigger and bigger, Fintechs have to comply. You can't have a situation when you become so big and you don't comply with the regulator when all others are complying, all others are regulated entities, and the system is the same for everybody. You can't get a special dispensation for very long. When you're very small, it is fine because, you know, hmm. you do some innovation at the edge, it doesn't impact the system. When you go to a particular size, and Paytm uh, has been pretty big size, you have to comply and you must take it very, very seriously. You know, these are pertinent points, Mr. Mohandas Pai, on, uh, you know, the board supervision uh, and the justified action from the regulator. But I wanted to ask you, uh, given the gravity of the concerns that RBI seems to have highlighted, what is the way out for Paytm Payment Bank? What is the way out for Paytm that will also get impacted? Uh, you know, uh, in a sense, would you say this is the end of the road for Paytm Payment Bank? And, you know, what happens next? No, I won't say it's the end of the road for Paytm Payment Bank because that is a decision that the RBI has to take. What the hmm. RBI has done is that you can't onboard new customers and from February 20th, I mean 29th or whatever it is, you can't continue to business. What I would expect is the independent directors of Paytm Independent Bank should have a talk with RBI, should look at all the non-compliances, promise RBI, but within so-and-so time, they will do it, and request RBI to come back for an inspection and give them some time, and then say, if we comply, please allow us to uh, allow us to continue business. Because RBI could shut them down, and RBI has shut down many companies. It is prerogative of RBI. You can't question the prerogative of RBI because RBI has given time. You see, the confusion mm. has been created because in the letter of RBI, final letter, they said we're going to take this regulatory action. They should have put a sentence there. We have been we have asked Paytm over the last 22 months to clean up the act, blah blah blah. And we had multiple visits, multiple audits, multiple this thing. Despite giving them 22 months, despite all this, they have not been able to comply. And now, therefore, we do this. If they have done that, I think you know it would have been very clear to the public because I see a lot of sympathy among fintechs who are saying, "Oh, you can't do this. Why are you doing this?" Some group of people writing letters to do this. I mean, the finance hmm. ministry will not uh, revoke this. They will not do it. RBI will not revoke it. 
I mean, you can't be uh, susceptible to pressure from a small lobby to say, oh, we are the greatest on the planet. We are very different. Uh, we are very different. You know, you must treat us differently. Okay. I mean, there's a question like RBI says of compliance, of protecting consumers and protecting the integrity of the financial system. So hmm. I think there's a failure. There's a failure there. And RBI has given adequate time. If RBI hmm. has not given them time, we could plead with RBI, please give us more time. We are in the process of compliance. RBI has yeah. not given time. And one of the things that comes out is that the system was the same. What about the confidentiality of data with a payment bank? The data hmm. of a bank has to be confidential. It cannot be revealed to anybody, including the owner. It has to be treated as a private asset because it is not the property of the bank. The bank is a trustee of yeah. the data of everybody. Now, if pay team, yeah. the holding company gets access to all the data and everything, that's a breach of confidentiality. You can't do so that. Mr. You Pai, can't have the same system. Yeah. You know, you seem, you seem to then, you know, uh, differ with a handful of startups that have penned this letter to the regulator, to the government to reconsider this action and give a window of opportunity to Paytm to explain themselves. You seem to differ from them. No, I differ from them because they don't seem to understand the gravity of the situation. You, hmm. can't, have a, you can't have a cowboy management running in the financial sector. Now, you've got Dr. K you know, Somaya Kanti Ghosh on your panel, right? He's a very eminent yeah. economist. He's from the SBI. You ask him what focus SBI has on compliance. The chairman personally took responsibility compliance. They have a compliance system. They comply with everything, and they've been doing it for 250 years. So all HDFC Bank has been doing it. HDFC Bank was wrapped in the knuckles. Now, HDFC Bank is the largest private sector bank, extremely well-run bank. And RBI is right. SEBI has taken action against NSC. SEBI has taken action against regulated entities. The duty of the regulator to make the system. And if a group of uh, fintech, uh, promote fintech founders feel they abhor the law, they abhor regulation. They must think again. I would have respected if the independent directors of Paytm Payment Bank had come together, returned to RBI, saying that, look, we will now set up a group. We will do all this. We promise you. Please consider. That would have been something. Because these are third parties. I don't think this group of people know uh, all the matters about uh, what has happened in the last mm. 22 months. Because even the governor said, look, a lot of things have happened in the last 22 months. I don't want to get into details. Because, you know, that is between the payment bank and the RBI. So this is a, this is a case of a lackadaisal attitude in a regulated business. When you, run a, when you run a business, you're regulated, you have to comply. There are no yeah. two opinions. And if, and, but you must, if, you are, if there's some latches there, you must get time. And they've been given 22 months. Of 22 mm. months, you're not able to comply. Then uh, what do you want to do? You want somebody to not comply with regulations, which have been laid on for everybody, and do whatever you want. I mean, you can't do that, right? That's not the way yeah. the financial system works. Yeah. Mr. Mohanda Spai, do stay on. Let me uh, have a quick word with, with uh, Mr. Prakash Divan as well, because the stock, as we can see, is down by close to 10% now as we seek, uh, speak for Paytm. Uh, you know, Mr. Divan, quick thoughts on what the governor said. What's next for Paytm? <laughs> I wish I knew that so clearly, but yeah. What, what seems to be evident from, uh, you know, the, all these uh, uh, details that were shared at the conference, uh, that uh, it's, it's, you know, the good news is that it's not a systemic issue. It's not something where the RBI is concerned about certain uh, trends in, in, in uh, the way some of the fintechs would operate. It's very specific to this business, to this company. And, uh, you know, the last couple of days we, we saw some bottom fishing. People probably thought, you know, it was, uh, you know, whatever damage had to be done in terms of the paper. Paytm payment bank uh, issues would probably not uh, uh, rub off onto the main listed stock, but then that doesn't seem to be the case. So till till they find a solution to get out of this, uh, attack, you know, this this delinking themselves uh, with the bank, the payment bank business, I think the main uh, business will probably keep getting impacted negatively. But surprisingly, the last comment that we saw from the deputy uh, governor very clearly told you that. There's absolutely no concern about the Paytm uh, business, and and that that is the one that we actually look at on the listed space, right? So uh, if that were the case, it it should not have more bearing than what it's already uh, the damage that's already been done. But I think it's mm. more of lack of certainty and uh, lack of clarity in terms of the next steps. That's that's what's plaguing the market's psyche right now, mm. Ritu. So I would I would believe uh, it's still a falling knife. Uh, it hasn't changed much from the last few days, uh, the last couple of weeks, in fact, ever since this uh, news broke out. The market will yeah. probably 
move on to better opportunities and not bother too much about whether there's revival which is imminent or not. Well, still a falling night. Uh, Mr. Pai, just final thoughts before we let you go. What is the larger takeaway from, uh, you know, this, this Paytm saga uh, for the startup e ecosystem for fintechs going forward from here? The message to fintechs, to all innovators and startups is when you are in a regulated industry, please comply, please put in processes, please have good governance, please make sure you do regular audits, please talk to the regulator and work with them to make sure you're on the straight path. If you're a small company doing innovation the edge, it is fine. Even if you make mistakes, the regulator will, you know, regulator will forgive you. But when you become larger, you have to comply. Compliance is, is important because of all this. Don't act like cowboys who believe that they are the greatest people in this planet. We've seen many regulatory failures. We've seen what happened to Bharat Pay. Baiju's has not been uh, compliant with regulations in submitting accounts. We have seen that, uh, you know, motor, some motor company, right? I forget the name, uh, you know, not compliant. I mean, they don't pay attention. This is a problem with all these, uh, you know, founders. They must pay attention. Whether you're small or big, you have to pay attention. You have to do it. You have to follow the law. You have to follow regulations. That is the message. And happy that the governor is saying we're going to release FAQs for them because it's not about innovation. This is not about young fintechs. Fintechs should be encouraged. Innovation should be encouraged. Technology disruption should be encouraged. But they have to be within an umbrella of the light regulation, then full regulations for a period of time. We can't let them come into a regulated system. We are dealing with people's savings and all lack of KYC and walk a mook. That cannot go on for long. And here in this case, RBI has given it 22 months. For 22 months, if you are not able to do it, 22 months, I think, was much before... Uh, much before the you know listing, am I right? I don't know. Somebody in the panel should say was 22 months was much before the listing. Now I wonder whether this notice was discussed as a risk factor at all. I don't know. It should be there in the risk factor. So I think you know people have to be careful, follow the law, focus on regulation, focus on compliance, do compliance audit, have independent as the board, and put them in charge of compliance so that they have oversight. And if you don't, don't fail as a management, take it seriously uh, because uh, RBI is not going to keep quiet and MCA is not going to keep quiet. They will uh, enforce the law. And there is a law that we have to obey. Okay. Mr. Pai, just very quick last question. You don't expect the startup ecosystem to be impacted. No loss of confidence of investors. No, no, there's no loss of confidence because this happens all around the world. This happens all around the world. There's a creative tension okay. between fine, innovators fine. and fintechs and regulators all around the world. There's a common issue all around the world in this area. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. That, that's very important, sir. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, Prakash, just one last word from you. Uh, you heard the you know, chapter and verse, how the governor explained how many bilateral contacts they have had with the Paytm yeah. management and how this was announced at the end of 22 months of, uh, you know, Toing and froing with the management. We don't know. Uh, Mr. Pai has raised the issue of independent directors, whether they bilaterally engage with them. We don't know. But repeatedly, the governor said there was bilateral engagement uh, with the management. Now, what's the advice to investors in the stock? Yeah, no, Lata, that's what I was sharing with Ritu. There's not much uh, that investors can do except for, uh, at, the, at the moment, moving aside, stepping aside, and waiting for 29th Feb. I don't think the language of the press conference tells you leaves any scope for an extension on this deadline. So whatever has to happen has to happen within the next uh, 20 day odd days. And and uh, investors will be better placed not to add to it, not to try averaging out, not bottom fishing, because this is something where there has to be some finite, you know, more more, more definitive decision making that will happen at the end of the RBI and uh, existential risk on the companies. Uh, payment bank uh, needs to get sorted before you start uh, buying into it. So the advice is just to stay away. If you are unfortunately invested, uh, you get a chance to exit, you probably would have to look at exiting from the stock. No, okay. Fair point. Uh, and uh, they are coming with an FAQ shortly, maybe as early as tomorrow. So that might give uh, some clarity. That FAQ may be only for consumers, we don't know. But certainly it will give investors also some clarity. They repeatedly said that FAQ is coming. It was in the governor's seven points that he made on uh, Paytm as well. Thank you very much, Prakash. Uh, and uh, many thanks to our economists and bankers as well for your patience. Uh, well, first up, uh, uh, Neeraj, what have you taken away? 
Are you getting the sense that more rate hikes have to happen from the bank's end? Because at least three times the governor said that their hikes have not been passed on uh, commensurately. So, Lata, we've discussed this before that as far as the deposit side is concerned, we've seen a fairly significant transmission. I think it's pretty much in line with what has happened on the repo rate. On the lending side, I think there is a competitive pressure, there is competitive intensity, and that is probably uh, having a bit of an effect on how much of this is getting passed. But please bear in mind that a large part of banks' portfolio is now linked to external benchmark uh, like repo. So, as and when the repo changes, the pricing changes. To some extent, the margin is a function of what is the competitive pressure, and that's probably what the governor was referring to. But we need to see how it evolves over a period of time. Please do uh, bear in mind that the cost of funds has undergone a significant change, has in increased over the last, say, about six months or so, and a bit of that is getting passed through. Okay. Are you getting a sense that they are going to keep the call at 6.5, not at 6.75? Well, I'm certainly hoping for that because uh, the month of December and a bit of January was also okay. on the upper end of the corridor. So I'm hoping that now with these actions that Reserve Bank has taken and the fact that government spending is expected, we will see better liquidity outcomes in the system. Okay. Thank you very much, Neeraj, for joining us. Ashish, same question to you. What are you now looking at in terms of call uh, rate? What did you take away? Uh, and therefore, does pressure of this chasing for deposits uh, recede at all? So, Lata, uh, uh, clearly, uh, I do expect the uh, call to more hover around 6.5% uh, uh, because RBI has already demonstrated uh, uh, the uh, uh, desire to ma manage it around the repo level. In fact, he actually made a statement that they would want it to be near about the repo level. So, I'm, I'm hopeful about that. But uh, another key takeaway is obviously about the transmission bit, which you did discuss with Neeraj about. Uh, I think uh, very, very clear transmission incomplete uh, in the credit market. So basically, the, the transmission has to uh, uh, sort of uh, continue. Uh, so I would think uh, uh, that that bit is, is, is something which is holding back uh, RBI. Another, just an important thing I would like to put into uh, perspective is, a uh, lot of debt that has been created in the world is the liability side of uh, the governments. And the asset side is with the private sector. So what we have seen is a lot of deleveraging that has happened. Uh, we'll actually find it difficult for banks to grow credit in a meaningful manner. And that's why the competitive pressures will set in. And now whether the, 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 the problem is with the credit spreads transmission or is it with liquidity spreads, we'll have to figure out I think what the governor in indicated and hinted is towards credit risk premium getting priced well. But that has to be seen in the context for the overall supply of credit that will eventually emerge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think this will require more fleshing out. Uh, but what you're saying is that cost of capital for companies can rise. I think so. Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that, uh, uh, Ashish. Uh, let me come to Shomyo and Pranjul now, the economists. Uh, uh, Shomyo, what did you take away in terms of what the governor said? Uh, you don't smell a change in stance anytime soon. Where do you smell the next rate cut at all? Yeah, Lata, thank you for having me on the show. I think before I start, I think, Lata, one interesting take from the policies, basically, I call it a competitive forecasting, because if you remember last two years, the RBI forecast was lower than the government. So this year, the RBI has straight away put the forecast for next year at 7%. So this actually gives, and with inflation at 4.5%, yeah. this gives the government much leeway to have a higher nominal GDP target. So this means that the next year fiscal deficit target could actually be lower than 5.1% if we just go by the same estimates. So that is one positive thing for the market. In terms of the other discussion on the liquidity, I think the government cash balances continues to be an elephant in the room. It has again increased to 3.8 trillion as on yesterday. It was declined to 2.7 trillion a month back. I think what is happening is that the conditionality is attached to the spending which the government is doing. And that is also applies to the states also. That is clearly having an impact on the cash balances. And this is going to be a longer term play in horizon because we have seen it in the RBI report and possibly if this is the new norm, 
I think government spending will continue to remain elevated and that could actually have a constraining impact on the core liquidity and the system liquidity moving in different directions. But the good thing over here is that I think the central yeah, bank... But is one minute, it. one minute, one minute, Samyo. Samyo, one minute. On that, the governor seems to have said that they will manage, you know, remain nimble and flexible in the liquidity management through two-way main and fine-tuning operations in both repo and reverse repo. We will deploy an appropriate mix of instruments to modulate both frictional and durable liquidity. Have they almost promised that they will behave like they behaved in the last 10 days? That is, give long-term repos and uh, manage the, uh, you know, shorter term uh, reverse repo. That is, they will take up the responsibility of keeping liquidity in such a way that call remains at six and a half. Is that a giveaway uh, from this yes. policy? Yes, I think, Lata, that's a giveaway because the simple analogy is that government cash balances isn't that it's supposed to be a temporary liquidity uh, injection or withdrawal. So you can't inject open market operation, which is a permanent injection. So we have to replace a temporary withdrawal or injection of government cash balances with a temporary injection or withdrawal of re variable or re re repo. So I think, therefore, the idea is clear in its intent that it yeah. will only inject reverse repo or repo with a different time tenures so as to get over with the call at frictional liquidity. Fair, fair enough. That seemed to be the takeaway, so that's why the bond market doesn't seem uh, to have reacted too much. Uh, a bit of placidity in the bond market. It's the stock market which has reacted, probably because it was more expectation of dovishness. And actually, the governor is talking about uh, more rate hikes not getting adequately transmitted. That seems to have uh, kind of captured the stock market's attention. Uh, Pranjal, your thoughts, your key takeaways, did you get anything by way of any dovishness on inflation? since they have brought down the inflation forecast for both the current quarter and the next quarter. So anything you're smelling in terms of inflation trajectory and therefore rate action or stance action? Uh, not at all, Lata. In fact, if I have this one takeaway, the takeaway is that the RBI is in no mood urgently to ease monetary policy. And I think different parts of the policy gave the same message. You know, the fact that Michael Pratra in the press conference said that they always wanted to align call money rate with repo rate at 6.5, but there were some exogenous reasons. Uh, my sense is that any movement uh, from of call falling uh, most permanently from 6.75 where it was to 6.5 actually should not be seen as easing by the RBI. It just should be that exogenous problems have been ironed out. Uh, they are very clear that their stance is all about getting to 4%. Uh, the governor kept saying that the last mile is the hardest. They don't want to give up in the last sort of mile at this point. Uh, I think one of the biggest fears that came out was, uh, the governor actually spoke about it a couple of times, that markets are front-running central banks all around the world, and they just don't want the same thing to happen in, in India, especially when we have situations like Red Sea that are actually increasing input costs around the world. And then finally, growth, right? You know, when you have a 7% GDP growth for the next 12 months, do you really need monetary policy easing at this point of time? So putting all of this together, the my one single most takeaway is that there is no sort of uh, rush to ease monetary conditions in any way at this point. Okay, okay. Well, uh, Shavio, let me just try one last. Uh, uh, Pranjal's answer is pretty definitive that uh, he is, they're not hinting at a rate cut uh, anytime soon. See, when they come into the August or the October policy, they may have one reading which is even below 4, because the average for that quarter is 4%. It is possible they may have even one Fed rate cut behind them. So would you still rule out a rate cut in the current uh, year? Or is it very likely in August or, or uh, September, October? So I think uh, in the best case, we had factored in a rate cut in August. Uh, but as you clarity said that in September, when you have the readings okay. of I think July and August, the numbers will be lower than 4%. So at this point, the RBI could have two to three numbers on the table, which could give it a clear direction that is moving down lower. So maybe the best case could be that the, the next bet for a rate cut could actually get extended a little bit. But Lata, you should also remember that next year we are actually getting bond inclusion. So that will also act as a counterbalancing factor in terms of liquidity inflows. So everything, so all of this remains on the table in terms of a liquidity, which may get better as bond inclusion happens. 
and possibly if inflation goes below 4%, then the RBI can have a relief. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you very much for your patience while we discussed what was the elephant in the room, the pay TM issue. Ashish, uh, Neeraj, Soumya, and Pranjul, thank you very much for joining us. Well, I would look at five key takeaways uh, from the uh, Reserve Bank's policy. One, they look a little more determined to keep the call rate at six and a half. And that's very important for, you know, the deposit uh, raising banks. Perhaps there will be a little more liquidity provided and therefore this mad rush for raising deposit rates could perhaps abate a bit. Secondly, that doesn't mean lending rates come down. They clearly want more, uh, you know, uh, passing over transmission of the rate hikes. So it's not really immediate relief for the borrowers. Uh, the third point that seems to have come is that they've clearly separated liquidity and stance and on uh, uh, rate action, it doesn't look like rate action is around the corner. I think a lot of data will have to be processed provided inflation comes in well below four in the mid quarter, in the second quarter. We cannot really be very sure of a rate cut anytime soon. And finally, on Paytm, it looks like a lot of water has flowed under the bridge. And uh, the Reserve Bank has given a lot of bilateral attention to the bank. And this appears to be at the end of a series of, uh, uh, you know, uh, actions and warnings and caution already given by the Reserve Bank uh, to the payments bank. Uh, and therefore, those who are investors must watch out. Those who are consumers, the Reserve Bank is going to definitely make all kinds of... Uh, uh, you know, convenience is available and an FAQ is coming very soon, probably as early as tomorrow or definitely Monday from the Reserve Bank, which will perhaps inform consumers and customers, uh, consumers and investors a little more about uh, the future of the Paytm Payments Bank. Uh, those were the five takeaways from the Reserve Bank. Very aggressive on growth. I forgot that. That's the fifth one. Uh, extremely positive that uh, the growth of the economy is not marred. So 7% on the table, something which even the government uh, didn't go with. Uh, on that note, from me and Ritu Singh, thank you very much for joining this special monetary policy coming straight to you from Mint Street. Uh, after a break, we will get back to markets and uh, uh, to the stock-specific action.